when you go back and um, and you listen and you hear some of the things over the years that Elijah Muhammad said, he said, I'm not here to teach you religion. I'm here to clean you up. Mm -hmm. The one who comes after me will teach you your religion. And that was the son. So when the son came in office in 1975, he immediately transitioned the community. Because uh, we were uh, really teetering on the edge. Our understanding of Islam was not correct at the time. Uh, and through Allah's mercy and forgiveness, he allowed that our community to transition uh, to the best, fact, best practices of El Islam. And that's where we began to move forward from 75 going forward. So how, how did the people take it then? Well, here's the thing, which is very important. You have to remember that you came from that black nationalistic type movement and the transition was very smooth. No one, there was no violence. No one was harmed. Everybody began to just move in and follow, follow Imam Muhammad in the direction that the community was going to go. You had some people that, um, and you have to remember that during that period of time, the, heavily, the community was heavily infiltrated by the government. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you have to remember that. That's important to remember. Mm -hmm. So they knew once new leadership came into place and once uh, Elijah Muhammad passed away that they were going to try to make sure that they stripped the economic base of the community and through the probate courts and they were able to do that. Uh, in 1987, the probate courts issued a $12 million, over 12, close to $13 million judgment against the community. Uh, but they knew how the tree was going to fall because they had already set it up. Yeah. How they were going to take us out. And uh, so the economic base of the community, but the leadership and the leadership of Imam Muhammad, the community was growing by leaps and bounds. Even though they hit us economically, we were growing by leaps and bounds. So, uh, and when you go back, you look at from the time the community started, uh, as they say, the history of the community, 4th of July, 1930. Uh, and we're approaching 90 years now. It'll be 90 years. 90, 90 years? 90 years Jeez. anniversary of this community will be uh, 4th of July, 1930. And, uh, and look at the growth from 75 to 2019 and how the community has grown uh, by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. uh, the areas that we still need to strengthen is we need to get back into established trade and commerce. That's the one area that uh, we haven't really established ourselves back in the trade and commerce. Mm -hmm. And finance, economics, we need to get back into that. No, you know, I like, I'm the interruption, mm -hmm. but how, um, can you see all the division that's happened, and not just in this community, mm -hmm. but all over the country, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the masters break up and stuff. But I like how you still refer to everybody as one community. Well, it is. Because yeah. that's basically, you have to understand the strategy. There's a strategy now to divide us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a strategy to divide the Muslims uh, in the areas. And what happens with that is this. Uh, in my opinion, what you see in the Middle East today, uh, that's was planned the division, the separation, uh, the different I'm this, I'm that, and the, the harm that they're doing to one another in those areas. Uh, that was by design. Mm -hmm. And I think they're trying to bring it home here in America. Yeah. And we have to be very careful about that. Because now we're at a point where uh, they recognize that this community, this is a young Muslim community. Imam Muhammad said this in, in uh in 77. He said, uh, I think it was February the 23rd, 1977, when he resigned from the administrative post of the, the World Community of El Assam. And he wanted to really turn over the, the administrative arm of the community to the community and to shore, set up the shore, set up the committees, and bring about total transparency and he really wanted to do more in terms of trying to develop uh, the religious parts and 
tra uh, translation of the Quran uh, to English, translation of the Hadiths. And he thanked the scholars, and I said in that address, I don't have it, this paraphrase, he said he thanked the scholars for the great work that they have done, but he said we need to chart our way. Mm -hmm. We need to start to, to lay, you know, we need to make a contribution. Mm -hmm. I think that's the word he is. Yeah. He's, we need to make that contribution. And that's what we wanted to do. And this is the young community. You gotta remember, we're only 44 years old now, mm -hmm. as far as our understanding of Islam. The first 45 years was more of a social reform movement. Yeah. So it wasn't really El Islam as we know it. Yeah. It wasn't the best practices of El Islam. So we're a young community. And we can really make a major contribution. And we can see what's happening all around the Muslim world and how Muslims are being persecuted, how you have other stuff. These are sovereign nations, Islamic mm -hmm. nations. And they're still having issues and problems with one another. And also, you know, so we have to look at this, figure out, say, hey, how can we chart a way forward mm -hmm. and lead the people out of the darkness and into the light? And that's really our job now. That's our responsibility. So we have to step up. And I often tell the brothers that, that we grew up with in the nation of Islam, I said, man, we have been trained to do a job. And I said, we have to step it up, man. We've seen all of this. We had all of these things. We saw what the government did and how it came after us mm -hmm. and how they attacked the community and how they wanted to strip the community. Mm -hmm. I said, but Allah is Akbar. Allah is Akbar. So that's the whole thing now is to stay together, to make our the, uh, the gains that we have, all of the properties, all of the facilities, all of the, the believers, the resources that we have, we have to unify, come together, be a collective force, and do what we've been asked to do. Mm -hmm. I asked to do my job. What's that? Convey the message. Mm -hmm. What else would we be asked to do? Yeah. I, you ain't been, we ain't been asked to do anything else. Convey the message. And we have to be the best example of human excellence. So that's what we're trying to do now. Mm -hmm. And that's what we should be looking at going forward. Would you agree that we... Even though we're in the community, we can, so we can be separate, but we're still together. Well, actually, here, here's the thing: you want to. We've been trained to really to, to utilize the resources that we have in a collective way, mm -hmm. and the more we work collectively, all right, all right. morning, the better off we're going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, the transparency has to be there. Mm -hmm. Sure, it has to be set up where people, Muslims, are coming together, planning. We should be building communities mm -hmm. uh, because what you want to do, you want to, um, you want to, like a young brother told me, he said, listen, brother Lester, I'm tired of talking. Mm -hmm. We have to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. We have to bring the people out of the darkness and into the light. So that means that you have to start building model communities. Mm -hmm. You have to demonstrate to them how to live as human beings. And you have to lead them out of that darkness. You got to take them from where they are and say, this is a better way. Yeah. I can show you a block where there's no crime. I can show you a block where there's children are playing. There's no, there's no madness going on. Mm -hmm. I can show you kids that are growing up that are being good, productive forces in society. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. I can show you businesses that have good halal products in it. Mm -hmm. Wholesome. I can show you and take you to play, and that's what we need to be doing. But we can't talk about it. We have to do it. Now. Do it yeah. And that's and the only way to do that is by collectively coming together, pooling your resources, having the transparency to do the things, setting up sure. It's not a one man operation. Mm -hmm. uh, Imam Muhammad said in the sixties, when he became the minister in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he knew he couldn't do everything, so he started to set up the committees to help govern the community. Mm -hmm. And that was we didn't know, but that was sure. Yeah. He said he was setting up sure then. Mm -hmm. In 75, when he came in, he said the same thing. They set up these committees to help govern the community, mm -hmm. which was sure. And he said, no. He also said this. He said, we don't have to make any rules or anything. The rules is Quran and Sunnah. Mm -hmm. So he was setting up sure, didn't use the term sure, but that's what 
and you had sisters and brothers, mm. young and old. Mm. And the transparency was it. I can recall in Chicago, <laughs> it got to the point whereas you would we wouldn't leave. The meeting wouldn't be concluded. Or Talim or whatever. Until the secretary came up with a report on what monies and what resources was collected that day. Uh -huh. And I know because I would be, sometimes I would be asked to take that information up to the secretary so the act could be read before the meeting was dismissed. Mm -hmm. How much money was collected for the different charities and stuff. Just the transparency there. Yeah. And those are the things that when you don't see those things, then you know that you got a problem. Yeah. When you see things happening like that, you know those are red flags. And that's the beauty, and that's what's easy for us to now. You say, can you fool a Muslim nowadays? I mean, you should say. <laughs> we know what time it is now. Yeah. I mean, the lights are on now. We yeah. can see. And that's the beauty of this, and that's why we're trying to help. And that's why I said, again, I, re I go back to the fellas and sisters that I soldiered with in that social reform movement, and, I can, and they know what we got to do. They know what we went through. They know the struggles. They know the hardships. And they can see now the beauty and how things are beginning to turn out. Goodness is, uh, goodness is on the rise. Mm -hmm. We just have to stay, stay with it, work together as a unit, begin to collectively pool our resources again, rebuild the trust that had been taken from us during that time and begin to move forward because the world needs our, our help more now than any other time. So we go back to like those early days, the, the businesses and the trade and commerce that we had during that period of time, supermarkets, like this is in LA. And I was blown away when I saw this, you know, because I'm, I'm like on the East Coast, I didn't even see this until later on in life and I saw that they, they had it really going on out there. And they were just doing a whole lot, a whole lot of businesses fish and poultry, Shabazz. This is where we need to really get back. Trade and you commerce. Know, you think we can get back there? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what were we talking about? We're talking about acquiring land, agriculture, farming. All of these things we have to get back to. This is all part of the mission and the work. No talk. Just go to work. Mm -hmm. Transparency. Collectively pool your resources to reestablish the trust. Mm -hmm. Start opening up the banking service. Say, if the banker says, God don't want to give me no money, no. You set up your own bank and do it correctly, Islamically. Yeah. Islamically, yeah. How are you supposed to set up a business and trade in commerce? Uh -huh. So that's what you, you want to demonstrate that to the world. You want them to see the best practices of El Islam. Mm -hmm. Show them that we can do this. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff is, is like, we just got to get back. And that's why I said, well, talk to the brothers that, that we grew up with, we soldiered with. I said, look, man. We were truly blessed, man. We thought, man, listen, we were on top of the world, man, at the time. Yeah. Man, we were doing some great things. Yeah. So what what happened then? How, how did it get well, like it is? Well, what happened? We can go back and we can say, we can start, say, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Well, let's look here. Let's look at what Mr. Hoover said he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to do. Yeah. So he had a plan. He had a plan. The Hoover plan was to take the resources of this community, the economic base, and take it away. And they thought they did. They went to court, probate court, and won a $12 million judgment uh -huh. against the community, uh -huh. taking most of the community's economic assets, taking all of that. But hey, you know, like I said, they said, you know, why are they still standing? And as Imam Muhammad said, a lock white ball. When, in 1976, they had this, when he gave the Savior's Day Address, was the first time the nation really opened up its books. And in that, he gave the State of the Nation report. Mm -hmm. And in that report, he began to identify where 
uh, and the problems that we were having economically. We had over a thousand employees in just what in Chicago alone. Mm -hmm. It was unsustainable. So something had to be done. Mm -hmm. So we started an austerity program. So you had the Hoover planners attacking us economically. You had other things that had to be done to try to stabilize the community. And he wanted the people to go back into the private sector and to make a difference. And that was all part of that. So now, you know, as I was telling the brothers, I said, listen, man, we were 19, 20 years old in 1975, teenagers, 73, 70. I said, now look at us now. In 74, 75, how strong was we then? I said, we were young guys. We didn't have a whole lot of money. We didn't have resources. But now we have an opportunity now to really make a difference and mm -hmm. to really give back and to really to share those experiences that we had during that time and start to rebuild and start to build a economic base again in this country. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. We need trade, commerce, trade. We need trade. We need businesses. We need to establish marketplaces again. We need to open businesses again. We need to start building communities mm -hmm. where we live at. You got to live around each other. That's right. Man. So it starts at the center. Wherever you have your Islamic center, then you start to build housing around that. Mm -hmm. And you build it correctly. Build it based on what Allah says in terms of handling your finances. Staying out of debt. Correctly. Understanding the importance of trying to stay away from interest and reba. Mm -hmm. Those are things that are important for us to start looking at now and demonstrate to the world that we can do this mm -hmm. and we can do it. It's not that, that difficult. Can. It ain't that yeah, difficult. Right. We can do it. You have to have good leadership. You have to have people who are not who are not greedy, arrogant, who people who really want to work together and to share the spaces that Allah has blessed us with, our mm -hmm. centers and things like that so that we can do the things that we need to do. And it's going to be us. It's us now. We as a community ha will have to, we're going to be that example. That light is going to radiate out from us and touch the whole global community. Mm -hmm. In Atlantic City or South Jersey, you should have a, a council of Islamic centers working together mm -hmm. to do the things we need to do, collectively pooling our resources mm -hmm. and establishing those business communities. It just shouldn't be this community or that, this. No, we should be collectively trying to do the work. Mm -hmm. What is the work? The work is to convey the message. How do we convey the message? By demonstrating to the world that we have the best way. Look at what we have here. Look at our school system. Look at our neighborhood. Look at our businesses. Look at the way we treat each other. Mm -hmm. We want to demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. And you can't do it by just talking. You have to live it. Yeah. And that's what we should be doing now. Do living this way of life. Mm -hmm. Living this way of life. You're right.